next on the Gospel Bill Show. This is Inky and Danky, my pet worms. Uh, can, can I see them for a little bit? Oh, no. They don't take kindly to strangers, and I'm their only family. Oh, I'd be real careful, Elmer. Just let me see them for two seconds. What do you got, Frank? Okay, but just for two seconds. Okay. <laughs> Hey! You take it easy! Thank you, thank you! Don't leave me! It's the Gospel Bill Show, featuring Gospel Bill, Nicodemus, Elmer Barnes, Miss Lana. Duck Water and the entire Dry Gulch Gang. Howdy doody, Sheriff. Johnny Bob McElroy, what are you doing in Dry Gulch? Well, I just came to make some friends. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I hope you're not here to play any pranks. Oh, no, I just got so lonely up in those hills, I just had to come down and meet some new people. Well, I think you'll find that the people of Dry Gulch are real friendly, as long as you don't play any of your tricks on them. Well, I don't aim to play any tricks. I'm going to be real good this time. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that. Well, you're going to have to excuse me, Johnny. i got some things to check uh, in. Ah, Sheriff, I think maybe we could play some checkers. Well, I'd really like to, Johnny, but old Cecil's cow got stolen, and i got to go check into it. I'll see you later. Okay, uh, no time, huh? Oh, I have everything I need to fill this. Hi, Miss Lana. Well, hi, Johnny Bob. I haven't seen you in ages. Yeah, I thought I'd come down from the hills and see how everyone's doing. Oh, it's good to see you. So I thought maybe like you and I could chat for a little while. What do you think? Oh, well, Johnny Bob, I'd love to sit down and chat, but I've got this large order for Mr. Stable for, and I've got to hurry. Oh, so you, you got to fill an order, huh? Oh, well. You don't have any time to talk? Say five more cans. Say one. Well, you sure are busy today, aren't you? Boy. Johnny Bob McElroy? Yeah? <laughs> it's times like this that let me know you came back too soon. Well, at least we had a nice little chat, didn't we, Miss Lana? Out! Out of my store! Out! Let's visit the elephant. Elephants are the largest land creatures in the whole world. They have big, strong legs that look like the trunks of trees. And the elephant's nose is so long that it can touch the ground even when he's standing. And his ears are huge. They look like giant leaves waving in the breeze. Mr. Elephant is quite a large fellow. Now, many elephants, like our friends here, must work hard every day. They haul logs and pull heavy loads. They have an incredible appetite after a hard day's work in the jungle. These elephants must have plenty of food to stay healthy and strong. They can eat more food in one meal than your whole family eats in a week. Wow! Do you suppose that God made these animals too large? I mean, they are pretty big and fat. You be careful, don't knock down the wall. Well, in many places in the world, there's not enough food to eat. Many people and animals go hungry, and it takes a great deal of food and water to take care of Elmer the elephant. But you know that God made Elmer just the right size? He knew what he was doing when he made these elephants, because nothing is too big for God. And if God can feed these elephants, then he can take good care of you. This elephant never worries that he'll run out of food. He doesn't worry about anything at all, so don't get wrinkled up. God will watch over you because you're special. You know, 
there's only one type of person in all the world who can talk to God, and that is a human being. I mean, you're special to the Lord because no one else can have fellowship with him like you can, so don't worry about anything. Trust in him. <laughs> Hey, Johnny Bob, how you doing? Hey, uh, Elmer, just a minute. Are you going fishing? Oh, yeah. I'm going to catch Big Daddy. Well, uh, maybe I could come along and help you cast your line? Oh, you better not. I better go alone. Because if I'm going to catch Big Daddy, I got to feel the vibration when he comes up. So, so I better go alone. Well, man, maybe I could just come and keep you company and talk to you. You can't talk if you're going to catch fish. You got to be. Real quiet. Oh, real quiet, huh? Ah, uh, Elmer, what you got in your hand there? Well, this is Inky and Dinky, my pet worms. Ah, uh, could, could I see them for a little bit? Oh, no. They don't take kindly to strangers, and I'm their only family. Oh, I'd be real careful, Elmer. Just let me see them for two seconds. What do you got, think? Okay, but just for two seconds. Okay. <laughs> hey! <laughs> take it easy! Thank you, thank you! Don't leave me! Now, Miss Phillips, I want you to know that if you do decide to place your money here in the Dragos Bank and Trust, you can have the confidence and peace of mind of knowing that your money... Hi, is Mr. Any... Tidewater! Oh, hello, Johnny Bob. Uh, excuse me, just a minute. Uh, what I was saying is that you'd have the confidence of knowing that your money is earning the highest interest in uh, the territory. Mr. Tedwater! Johnny Bob, what is it? I thought maybe uh, you and I could talk a little bit together. Uh, Johnny Bob, obviously we cannot. I am talking with a customer. Now, excuse me. Now, I believe it would be in your best interest, Miss Phillips, to open an account here at my bank. Yes, uh, that's right, because all new customers will get a free prize. Hold out your hand. You get... Free word! <laughs> Let's play hide and seek! Johnny Bob McElroy! Oh! Hey, Miss Lena, I got this serious problem. Well, what is it? Well, you see, this afternoon I was supposed to take Miss True Lou out to the country for a little picnic. Oh, sounds like some romance going on. Yeah, I'm sure there will be. But here's my problem. It's in the area of food. Now, I got most of your basic food groups covered. For instance, for bread, we got chocolate muffins with cream cheese and peanut icing. And then for fruit, we're going to have a whole bunch of green olives. And then for your vegetable group, I got two or three cans of green beans, you know, to help keep your facial muscles toned up. And then for the meat group, we're going to stop by Colonel Sandiford's on the way out of town. Colonel Sandiford's? Yeah, you know that uh, retired army colonel went into the chicken business? He got great chicken, but I never could figure out his secret recipe of all them herbs and spices. Well, what is your problem? Oh, I don't have any dessert. Uh, well, you are a lucky man. Oh, how's that? Well, just this morning, I baked up two fresh cherry pies. With real cherries in them? <laughs> That's why they call it cherry pie. Ooh, uh, well, could I buy one of them? Well, sure. Oh, wow. Mm, I'll, I'll pay you for it later. Uh, but with uh, everything you described and, and with the pie, isn't that a lot of food? Well, it's no more than I usually eat. Ooh, I sure hope Miss True Lou brings something for herself. Gotta be going. Johnny Bob McElroy, long time no see. Hey, I'm Nick. Uh, Johnny Bob, uh, I'm kind of in a big hurry. You see, I got a heavy date with a real cutie. So you don't want to talk to me, huh? Yeah, we're going to spend all afternoon just talking. I guess you don't want to spend any time with me, then. There's nothing I'd rather do than spend time with my sweetie. Yeah, I'll spend some time. Say, Nick, uh, that sure is a good-looking pie you got there. Yeah, it's a good-looking pie. Well, listen, I gotta be going. Hey, yeah, uh, that pie sure looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks real good. <laughs> See ya. Hey, I bet that pie is really gonna taste good, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's gonna taste real good. I gotta go. Hey, you know what, Nick? I heard 
and you can tell how good a pie is going to taste by the way it smells. Just by the way it smells? Yeah, go ahead. Just take a sniff. You'll find out. Just, just smell the pie? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, this pie sure does smell. <laughs> Johnny Bob McElroy! Man, I just don't know why I can't make friends. Maybe it's because no one likes me. Hey, maybe it's my breath. Jeannie! Jeannie, come here! What is it, Eugene? Hey, listen, I've been having trouble lately making friends. I thought maybe my breath was bad. Uh, would you check and see? <laughs> Your breath doesn't smell bad to me. You know, it's because I brush my teeth all the time. Uh, maybe I don't smell so good uh, in other places. You don't smell bad. Well, that's not it, then. You see, I can't make any friends, and I don't know why. Well, Eugene, what are you doing to make friends? Well, I don't know. I mean, I walk home from school by myself every day. There are lots of other kids walking home from school, but none of them ever come over and say, Eugene, would you like to walk with us? Then, in the lunchroom every day at school, I eat all by myself. Have you ever invited someone to eat lunch with you? Well, no, I haven't thought of it. Eugene, the Bible says that if you want to make friends, you have to show yourself friendly. Don't wait for other people to come and ask you to walk home. Don't wait for other folks to come and ask you to eat lunch with them. You do the asking. You mean uh, I should ask first? Sure. But what if someone doesn't like me? They'll let you know right away. But you should take it on yourself to be friendly first. Well, I'm going to try that, Jeannie. It better work. And I hope you're not lying to me about my breath. Oh, Sheriff, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's no Linky and Dinky, my two best buddies. Now, listen, Elmer. I don't think Johnny Bob intends to keep your worms. I think he's probably just teasing you. Oh, teasing? He just doesn't understand. That's the only family I got. All right, well, I'll do my best to get you pet worms back, Elmer. Sheriff, listen, worms, big deal. Do you realize that Johnny Bob is taking these worms over to my bank and is running off customers? How's he running off customers? You realize there's this young single woman who just inherited a tremendous amount of money, and he ran her off by putting worms in her hands. Oh, I'll see that that didn't happen again, Mr. Tedwater. He ruined it, what he did. He just plain and simple ruined it. He ruined my date with Trudy Lou, and he ruined my cherry pie. No, tell me, let me guess. Johnny Bob McElroy. Who else? All right, listen, fellas. Johnny Bob doesn't mean anything by any of these pranks. I mean, he's doing these things just because he wants some attention. He's trying to make friends. Well, he sure got a funny way of doing it. Well, listen, I'm going to find him and sit him down, have a talk with him, and I think I can straighten him out. Well, what are you going to do, lynch him? No, I'm not going to lynch him. Mr. Tutwater, it's not that serious. Now, you guys just go on and get out of here. I'll find Johnny Bob and take care of things. Just calm down. Everything's going to be all right. Come on, now. Get out of here. If I can give Johnny Bob some of this pie up his nose. Oh, all right, guys. Now, go on down here and calm down. What? Nobody home? <laughs> Johnny Bob McElroy. Excuse me, Charlie. I'm just checking.
Hey, Bob McElroy, I thought you told me you wouldn't be playing pranks on people while you were here in Dry Gulch. Well, I wasn't good at it. No one would talk to me, and playing pranks is the only way I can get anyone to notice me. Johnny Bob, that's not the way to make friends. You're making people mad at you. Don't you know how to make friends? I don't know how, Sheriff. Well, now listen. You certainly don't do it by getting everybody upset. The Bible says that if you want to make friends, you've got to show yourself friendly. You need to do things that, well, and let people know you're their friend, not tear up all their property. Now listen, Johnny Bob, I'm going to lock you up in this jail for a few days to teach you a lesson. Or I'll let you out of here if you're willing to make things right with the people you've been pestering. I think I'll make things right. Well, you can start that out right here and now by cleaning up my jail. Boy, I'm going to have to get myself an appointment book. I got so many friends now, I can't keep up with all of them. Let's see now. Toby's coming over this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Johnny's going to spend the night tomorrow night. And Billy's going to stay all day with me on Saturday. Man, am I ever going to have a lot of fun this week. I got so many friends, I don't know what to do. Hey, Eugene, did you take my advice? Boy, I'll say, Jeannie, and it worked. I got friends coming over to spend the night, friends coming over to play every afternoon after school. Jeannie, I got more friends than I know what to do with. Well, that's great, Eugene. What did you do? I decided to ask those guys to come and do some things with me, and it worked. Boy, Jeannie, you were right. If you want friends, you've got to show yourself friendly. Oh, thank you, thank you. I just can't stop thinking about you. How can I go fishing without my buddy? Uh, excuse me, Elmer. Thief! Hi, Elmer. I'm sorry for taking Inky and Dicky from you, and I've come to return them. Are they all right? Well, they did suffer a little bit of motion sickness, but I, I think they'll be okay. They do look a little thin. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, just to make it up to you, I've got two new friends for Inky and Dinky. Huh? Yeah. Uh, Trixie and Pixie. Girlfriends for Inky and Dinky? Yeah, it's the least I could do. Well, thanks a lot, Johnny Bob. And hey, next time I go fishing, you can go with me. Ah, oh, thanks, Elmer. It's time for a welcome home party. Pink Moss is on me. <laughs> Bob McElroy makes me so mad. Well, he ruined my pie. He ruined my whole date. Now, how could a pie ruin your whole date? Didn't you wash it off? Well, sure, I washed it off, Miss Lena. But I can't go out on a date with Miss Trudy Lou with me a smelling like a fruit pie. Well, why not? Don't you understand? Women like to go out with men that smell like real men. You know, the way I smell after I've been out on the trail a couple of months, punching cattle with trail dust all over me. Well, a man order smell like a real man. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Nicodemus, I wanted to apologize for, for messing up your pie like I did, and I'm sorry. Well, Johnny Bob. Well, I don't know what to say. I forgive you. And Miss Lana, I'm sorry for messing up your general store like I did. Would you forgive me too? Well, thank you, Johnny Bob. I sure do. Well, I was just hoping we could all be friends. Johnny Bob McElroy, just the guy I was looking for. I wanted to thank you for the great job you did in cleaning the windows at the bank. Well, I just wanted to make it up to you, Mr. Tutwater. Well, Johnny Bob, you're okay in my book. I am? Yeah, you're a pretty good guy, Johnny Bob. Really? You sure are, and you're welcome in this store anytime. You really mean it, Miss Lana? Well, I sure do. All of my friends are. Have you been feeling <laughs> down lately? No, no, no. Is everybody <laughs> laughing at you? Do people take advantage of your situation? You don't have to be this way forever. Oh, 
I should have known. Actually, the answer is simple. What? That's right. All you need to do is belong to Gospel Bill's Deputy Club. I mean, just look at all the great things you'll receive when you join. Now you may ask, how do I sign up? Move in here and I'll show you how we're going to do it. You simply send us your name, address and age, plus $1 for postage to Deputy Club, Post Office Box 639, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74013. And while you're at it, why not get one for a friend? <laughs> That'd be really nice of you. I appreciate that. Well, sure, I'm just glad to do it. Hey, today we're going fishing, but we're not going after fish. Today we're going to learn how to catch some friends. You know, catching a friend is a whole lot like catching fish. You've got to use the right kind of bait. Now, if you wanted to catch a fish, you wouldn't take this old boot down to the fishing hole and put it onto your hook and throw it out into the water. Why, if you did that, you could never expect to catch a fish. But that's what people do when they try to catch friends. They use the wrong kind of bait. You see, if you want to catch a friend, you have to be friendly. And you know what some people do? They expect everyone else to come to them first. They're so shy, and they never say a word to anyone. They never invite anyone else over. They always want someone else to ask them. But you know what? If you want to be a friend to someone else, make yourself friendly. You do the asking. Don't be bashful and stuck up. Now, here's another way that people use bait, and the wrong kind of bait, I might add, to catch friendly fish, and that is they use garlic. It's an old rotten attitude. They're sour with everybody that they meet. They're afraid that no one's going to like them, so the way they compensate is by being ugly to everybody else. They're always saying smart things to everybody, cutting everybody else down. That's not a very good way to make friends. It's like fishing with garlic, and by the way, fish don't like garlic. All right, this is a worm, and he's the right kind of bait, and that's the kind of bait you've got to use if you want to catch a friend. You've got to use friendliness. The Bible says that if you want to make friends, show yourself friendly. So do things that a friend would do. Give someone a gift. Invite them over. You take the first step in making friends, and before long, you'll catch all the friends you can handle.
You know, Jesus is the best friend that anyone can ever have, and He wants to be more than your friend. He wants to be your Savior. You see, Jesus died on the cross so that He could be your Lord and Savior, and if you ask Him to come into your heart, He will. Just bow your head right now and say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for my sins, and I believe that God raised you from the dead, and I ask you to come into my heart right now. And if you'll pray that prayer and mean it, Jesus will be your friend and your Savior, and you'll be so happy that you invited him in.